Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Bruce with DIY Homestead Projects. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some beginner TIG welding tips that I've learned over the course of the past seven months. And I've learned some things that I think can probably help you out as well if you're a beginner or maybe you just bought a machine and you're wanting to teach yourself and learn how to TIG weld. Anyway, let's get right into this. Let's talk about the TIG torch setup the first beginner TIG welding tip that I've really, really benefited quite a bit from. And I've watched a lot of these uh, professionals or experts, and you hear them all talk about stubby setup for your TIG torch. Well, I did that fairly early on, and I'm gonna explain to you why and the benefits that I've received from it. So first off, when you get you know your TIG machine, most of them probably just come with standard TIG torch components with a uh, standard cup and, and all of that. By going to a stubby, for me the biggest benefit is the stubby portion. The fact that it's shorter. I'm not talking about the back cap or anything here. That's all personal preference and if you're in tight locations trying to make a weld, it's not that critical to me. I keep a long back cap so I can have the longest piece of tungsten in there as possible and that helps your tungsten last longer. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures and examples of things that I've purchased. Some of them are uh, name brand CK Worldwide products and some are just some cheap Chinese stuff I got off of Amazon. Matter of fact, I got them all off of Amazon. I'll put links for all this stuff in the description below so you can have a look at that if you're interested in any of it. What's the benefit of having a stubby kit? If you've got a longer tip out here where the tip of your tungsten is, any movement in your hand is going to translate into a much larger movement from this pivot point where the handle is. The longer that is to your tungsten, the more magnified any movement is going to be. So you're trying to get steady, you're trying to be comfortable, and you're trying to, to make a nice smooth bead. If you, like me, you got the shakes or you don't have a good prop or something like that, all those movements on a standard cup setup, it's all gonna be magnified. So for me, the biggest benefit of the stubby was it shortens that moment there and it kind of dampens your wiggles and shakes and movements. Also, just the way I like to rest my hand on my work table or on a prop, I have to be much higher with a longer cup, like the standard stuff. The shorter it is, for me, the more comfortable that is. So I've converted my TIG torches with these stubby gas lens kits. Now I've got uh, some products from CK Worldwide. There is a CK Worldwide distributor that, uh, that operates on Amazon, and this is where I bought these products. I'll show them to you real quick here, and I'll put links in the description. But I bought a two-pack stubby gas lens kit for a CK17 torch. Also, I bought a two package of heat shield gas lens. It's that nylon piece that fits on the front of your torch. It comes in a two pack. These are in the neighborhood of 20, 25 bucks each. And then I also bought a package of five stubby uh, wedge collets. Now I bought the wedge collets. These were not cheap. These are CK Worldwide, but they are totally worth the money. I'm still running on the very first wedge collet that I put in my, uh, in my TIG torch. Still using the same one, and it's working just like it did the day I put it in there. I've been completely satisfied with using the wedge collets. It was a five pack. I've got, I still have four in here, and the original one is still in my torch. They've been just fantastic. So, good investment. Uh, if you don't want to spend the money for the CK name brand stuff or whatever brand torch you may actually have and you want to go with a cheaper alternative, two parts that I bought. I bought a 3 seconds inch stubby gas lens kit, about eight and a half dollars. And then these two pieces came together and this is a WP26F, so flex head replacement torch and the handle that goes with it. So that's what I'm gonna install and replace on the uh, on that European torch and try to make it a little, little bit nicer the way I like it to be. So 
This kit has uh, three gas lenses, a 6, 7, 8, a Pyrex cup, four O-rings, Teflon insulator, a medium-sized back cap, gas lens, 3 30 seconds, 3 30 seconds call it. I'm going to install it on this torch and then I'm going to install this torch onto the uh, torch lead for the yes welder machine. So this is real easy if you've never done this before. Let me just walk you through it. You need to replace this Teflon cover. It just pulls right off of there. This one is kind of tapered and this is the one for the standard cups. You need to replace it with the stubby Teflon. It just pops on just like that. And then we'll take the gas lens and that just screws into the end of the torch. Goes right through that Teflon cover. Threads right in there. I like to take a pair of needle nose and just give it a little bit of a snug. Not tight, just a little snug. When this wears out, I'll replace it with one of those uh, wedge collets. Drop that in the back. Put the uh, end cap on there. And for now, I'm just going to use one of these ceramic cups. They just screw on. This is the number seven. A nice flex head setup with the stubby kit. And that gives me, from the end of the Teflon there, one inch. The standard, which is almost an inch and three quarters, right out here to the edge of the cup. So knocks off three quarters of an inch in length. In comparison, this is what you get. For me personally, the stubby part, this here is the important part. So I don't have that huge shaky swing and instability. This will be a lot more stable just for the simple fact that it's a lot shorter. It just needs to go on the hose before you put this together and then it just slips on here just like that. It's much smaller diameter than the European style handle that's on there. And that's what I'm after. I'm going to lose the switch, but I can always get a switch to put on here if that's what I think I want to do. But if you're trying to save money and do it on the cheap, I've been satisfied with this while I'm learning. For practice, I think you'd be, uh, be okay with this. I, I recommend it, and I'll put the link in the description. I also bought a package of, I don't know, I think there's 10 of them in here, these stubby uh, cups. This whole package, four, six, eight, there's 10 of them in there, are number seven. That's all they had. I was going to buy number eight. But I think six, seven, or eight, any, any of those will be fine. You know, you take the cup size, if you have a seven, you double that, 14, that should be your cubic feet per hour setting or a good place to start for your argon. So the smaller the cup size, the less gas you're gonna use, theoretically. And there's a lot more to the cups than just that, but, but that's just a basic understanding of the cups. But it's just been beneficial for me to go with the stubby. So that's part of getting yourself comfortable. Get the TIG torch set up that works for you and uh, practice with it consistently the same each time. So you can start to build muscle memory on this stuff and you'll get to where you can just sit down and you're comfortable. You don't have to think about it. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And please let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos about this particular subject. I have learned a lot over the last seven months and I can kind of go back and teach you guys or tell you guys a few things that have really worked out for me and some of the things that that didn't work out so well and maybe that'll help you uh, prevent you from making those mistakes too you can really learn from my mistakes throw up a couple videos that you might be interested in here on the screen at the end if you like this kind of thing and you got some value out of it and we'll see you on the next video